May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to worship with the congregation of the Presbyterian Church of Danville this morning. On this day of Pentecost, we remember how the outpouring of the Holy Spirit brought people of all nations together. And we celebrate how that same spirit unites us today, even when we are unable to gather together in the same place. God has poured out God's spirit on all people. And so we welcome you, whoever you are and wherever you may be today. If you are new to our worshiping community, we would like to get to know you better. And we would like to invite you to get to know us better. So you can start by visiting our website, our Facebook page, or our YouTube channel. We also send a weekly newsletter and information about worship each week by email, and we would be happy to include you on our list of subscribers. You'll find le links to each of these references at the end of this service. And you are also welcome to email me directly at caroline at presbydan.org. And now I wanna invite Nancy Martindale to tell you about the Pentecost offering today. Good morning. Remember that this offering is about children and for children. And it seems important right now to be helping children, especially with this time of school interruptions and everyone having to stay separate. There's so many uncertainties, Lord. 40% of this collection will stay with the congregation for use in our ministries for children at risk. 60% will go to the Presbyterian mission agencies for youth and young adults at, as well as children at risk. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Where do I? Now I want to invite John Irwin uh, to join me for a special recognition. Um, on this day that we celebrate the birth of the church, I want to take a moment on behalf of the staff and the congregation to celebrate the birth of our church online and to thank John Irwin for his help in making that possible. Back on March 15th, in desperation, I called John multiple times for help in getting a 15 minute video of my reflection and prayers online for that first Sunday after we suspended in-person services. And John has been our production designer and manager ever since. Little did any of us know we would be producing weekly worship services on video for the past 12 weeks, including the season of Lent and Holy Week. Nor did we know what it would take to make that happen. Every week, John takes all the videos that we send him, sometimes up to 12 separate clips, and he creates a coherent whole from those pieces. He literally puts our worship service together, and then he posts it on YouTube, where it's available for all of you to view every week. And so, John, I just want to say publicly on behalf of the congregation that we cannot thank you enough for your willingness to step in and to help us make worship possible for our congregation. This is such an important connection that we, uh, that we make and to be able to do this week after week without interruption is just fantastic. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We also want to celebrate the birth of the church by discerning together how the spirit might be shaping our next phase of ministry together during this pandemic when we need your help for that. And so next week we'll be sending out a survey asking you to reflect on your experiences with online worship, learning opportunities and fellowship on whether and how you are connecting with us and one another and on how we might better build on those connections as we move forward. We also want to hear from you about resuming in-person worship. And 
when and under what circumstances you might feel comfortable returning to the building. So please be on the lookout for that survey in your email inbox next week. And we do thank you for your responses in advance. During a week that has left me bereft at the loss of life and property, the injustice of oppression and our inhumanity to one another, I am so grateful for your witness of love and generosity in response to the challenge grant issued in memory of Sue Cleveland and Evie Smith. Your contributions to this fund established to help victims of COVID-19 have not only met the $25,000 challenge, but have exceeded it by more than $10,000, which means that we will be able to distribute a total of over $60,000 that will make a positive difference here in our community and elsewhere in the world. We give thanks for Sue and Evie and their lives of generosity and love, and for the way these funds will help extend their legacy, especially during this pandemic. And now friends, let us worship God from whom all good things come and with whom all things are possible. Friends, we are gathered today in our homes, together in spirit while apart in body. We light a candle to remind us that Christ is ever present with us, wherever we may be. Please join me in the opening sentences. In the last days, when great wonders will occur, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all people. On the feast of Pentecost, when my church began, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all people. On Pentecost this year, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all people. 
Your spirit is present wherever we may be, O God. May we feel the spark of her fire, the rush of her wind. May our visions and dreams be of justice and mercy for all your creation. May we prophesy of your vision of a new heaven and a new earth. Remove our anxiety and fear that keep us from being truth tellers. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Pour out your peace on all your people. The Spirit of God helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words, trusting in God's grace. Let us confess our sin. The Spirit comes with fire of justice, and we offer the extinguisher of complacency. The Spirit comes with the rain of love, and we offer an umbrella of reserve. The Spirit comes with bearing fresh winds of change, and we close the windows. Let us take a few moments of silence to name the sin that has caused harm to ourselves to the others these week. And now, together, we say, Forgive us, and blow through our lives, O Spirit, Open to the newness of life you bring, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news of God's promise. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the name of the Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. 
Thanks be to God. Good morning, young disciples. Do you know what special day this is? This is Pentecost Sunday. It's a time when we remember that before Jesus returned to heaven, he promised that his Father would send a helper, the Holy Spirit, to live inside those who follow him. He promised that the Holy Spirit would give them the power to do great and mighty things. And this happened just as Jesus said it would. On the day that we call Pentecost, the disciples were gathered all together in one place. And the Bible tells us that they heard a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole place where they were gathered. And then flames of fire appeared and rested upon each of them. And when these things happened, the disciples were filled with power and they began to preach and to teach about Jesus. And they were able to do things they'd never done before because the power of the Holy Spirit was within them. This morning, I have a flashlight with me to help us to understand the power and importance of the Holy Spirit. Now, this flashlight is not very big, but it does put out a very bright light. And we have these in several rooms in our house. We have one in the kitchen and one in the family room and one in each bedroom so that if the electricity ever goes off and we're left in the dark, these flashlights can help us find our way around our house, kind of like an emergency lighting system. But what do you think gives this flashlight the power to produce such a bright light. Well, of course, it has batteries. And these batteries are the source of its power and allow it to shine the bright light. And if it doesn't have these batteries, it just won't work. And that reminds me how the Holy Spirit works within us. So, in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, our scripture lesson today is from the book of Acts in the New Testament. And it tells us that on the day of Pentecost, people were filled with the Holy Spirit and they could do mighty things as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now, it's that same Spirit, Holy Spirit, that gives us the power to be able to let our light shine in the world. So, just like the batteries in this flashlight are the source of power for this flashlight, the Holy Spirit in our lives is our source of power to help us live our lives for Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have sent us the power of the Holy Spirit. Please fill us up each day with the Holy Spirit that we would have the power to live for Jesus and let his light shine in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Let the fire of your spirit shed light on your word, O God. As we read the story of Pentecost, may we find a breath of fresh air, a word for our hearts, and a light for our path. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. Hear a word from God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there was a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God. This has been a hard week. Most of us have seen images that have repulsed us or horrified us in the media. Some of us who spend a lot of time on social media have had to shut it down because that one image of George Floyd's murder fills our timeline and we just can't look at it anymore. Or we can't take all the vitriol that people seem to feel free to spew at each other at this time. Some of us have turned off our usual TV or radio news channels for the same reason. And we're in the midst of a pandemic. Many of us are struggling with daily life. And what used to be quality time at home with the people we love has morphed into something else. And we are being confronted by some painful truths about ourselves that we would perhaps rather not see. We are tired and sad and frustrated and angry and fearful. And it seems that a world that has been strangely quiet for the last few weeks has suddenly erupted in flames and violence. Which is not perhaps unlike the situation that Jesus' disciples found themselves in on this same weekend 2,000 years ago. Jesus had returned to the Father and his followers were in hiding, afraid. The powers that be may be looking for them also. I imagine they feel utterly powerless. But they are waiting for the power that Jesus promised them, the power of the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, 120 men and women are hiding out, afraid, and when the Spirit of God suddenly shows up in their midst with a sound of rushing wind and fire, and they all begin to prophesy, to speak the truth of God in all kinds of languages. Maybe our scripture reading today sounded a bit like what it might have sounded like on that day. Well, all this noise draws a crowd and they are amazed at what they're hearing and puzzled also, what does this all mean? But some have already made their minds up. These people are drunk. Peter stands up to confront 
their accusation. And remember, the last time Peter said anything in public, in front of a crowd, it was to tell a little girl that he didn't even know Jesus. But now, suddenly, he has the courage and the power to address a large crowd about Jesus. He says, these people aren't drunk. It's only nine in the morning. And he tried to explain that what they were seeing by, was, was something that had been uh, referenced by the prophet Joel 800 years before. And we are going to watch a visual interpretation of what Peter said to the crowd that day. That video may have seemed quite jarring and maybe even made you jump a little when it started. But that's the job of the prophets, to jolt us out of our slumber, to wake us up, to tell us the truth about all the ways our lives are out of step with God, to tell us the truth about the ways that we are participating in injustice. Rather than acting justly, and resisting injustice wherever we find it. Peter tells them that what they're seeing on this day is the day that the prophet Joel anticipated more than 800 years before this. The day when the Spirit of God would be poured out on all flesh, on all humanity, not just on a few special people, not just on the prophets of Israel, whose calling was to speak truth to power, but on all people, old and young, men and women, not just on those the crowd might have expected, the older men there, but on those they would definitely not have expected, young men and women. But as far as the crowd in Jerusalem that day was concerned, or at least some of them, all of these were the wrong people, uneducated, untrained, not the religious of Israel. So some in the crowd mock them. They're drunk, as if somehow their ability to speak in other languages is a side effect of excessive alcohol consumption. Why do you think they'd say that? I wonder if it's because... If they can dismiss them as drunks, then they can dismiss what they're saying. I wonder if you and I are still tempted to do that. When we don't like what we're seeing or hearing, we look for a reason to dismiss the person so we can then dismiss what they're saying. That kind of characterized Jesus' ministry from the very beginning. At the beginning of John's Gospel, Nathaniel says, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? 
Early in Mark's Gospel, the scribes say of Jesus, He's possessed by the devil. And throughout Luke's Gospel, the Pharisees are constantly critiquing Jesus for the company he keeps. Dismiss the person. Dismiss the message. We usually say we want to hear the truth, but only if it comes to us in a way we like, in a way that doesn't make us feel uncomfortable, in a way that perhaps doesn't demand too much of us in response. Because when we hear the truth in a way we don't like, or if we don't like the truth that we hear, then we will try to find a way to dismiss the truth teller. And so, if an African-American professional ball player takes a knee during the national anthem to protest police brutality against people of color, we'll find ways to dismiss the truth teller so we can ignore or deny the truth being told. And if people of color take to the streets to protest yet another unarmed black man being killed by a police officer, caught on video so that no one can deny the deliberate act that it was, done with the complete lack of empathy for another human being, we will still look for ways to dismiss their protest so that we don't have to deal with the truth that the protesters so desperately want us to see. Black lives matter. For they were amazed, saying to one another, one another, what does this mean? But others were mocking, saying, they're drunk. They're thugs. But it's not just truth tellers about society that we are prone to dismiss. Perhaps more often, it's when the truth tellers get personal with us. Maybe you can think back to a time when someone spoke truth to you, a truth perhaps that you did not want to hear. Perhaps they found the courage to confront a pattern of problematic behavior they saw in you or something that you had done that concerned them. Maybe it was the way you spoke to your kids. Maybe it was how you spoke about your kids' friends in front of them. Maybe it was your drinking or your workaholism, or your selfishness, or your self-destructive behavior, or your seeming lack of kindness for anyone else. Someone spoke the truth to us that we did not want to hear, and we had to find a way to dismiss the truth teller, because we knew what it would cost us to admit that truth to ourselves. Truth-telling, or prophecy, is one of the gifts of the Spirit that Paul writes about. If I were to ask you if you saw yourself as a prophet, what would you say? I imagine most of us would respond, no. If I were to ask you who the prophets are today, who would you point to? Perhaps your preacher. Perhaps Reverend William Barber of the Poor People's Campaign because somewhere along the line, we got the idea that prophets are a special class of people, that only certain people can speak God's truth, especially truth to power. But Pentecost has put an end to that idea, or at least it should have, because the Spirit has been poured out on all flesh. For our Jewish siblings, Pentecost, or the Feast of Shavuot, is the celebration of the giving of the law to Moses. And what happened in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago is the fulfillment of something that Moses himself saw a little later on. There's an incident in the book of Numbers when the Spirit falls on a couple of men who begin to prophesy. And Joshua runs up to Moses and tells him he needs to stop what they're doing. And Moses responds like this. Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit upon them all. Pentecost is the fulfillment of Moses' wish 
for we are all prophets now. One of the bishops in the United Methodist Church, Will Willimon, says that what makes a prophet, a person a prophet, is not a special call on their life. It is not an education. It's not a platform from which to speak. It's not a title, and it's not the approval of some religious institution. No, what makes a person a prophet is their subservience to the truth. Their willingness to speak God's truth, no matter what the cost. To speak God's truth, the truth which always challenges the status quo, whether that's the status quo of our own lives or the status quo of a nation. But more than just individual prophets, we are called to be a prophetic community. People who tell the truth to others in our life. People who tell the truth to a world that is out of step with God. People who tell the truth simply by the way we live life together. Because since Pentecost, when the Spirit was poured out on all flesh, we are all prophets now. The question is, are we willing to tell the truth that others do not want to hear? And are we willing to listen to the truth that we don't want to hear? With the Spirit's help, may it be so. Amen. Well, it is Pentecost, and even though we are not gathering in one place this morning, here is a visual reminder of this weekend when we remember that the Spirit continues to fall on young and old, on men and women alike. Will you join me in speaking a litany for Pentecost? The spirit that rushes in like a violent wind is also the spirit of gentleness. The spirit that tears down walls between people is also the spirit that opens hearts and minds. The spirit that cleanses with fire is also the spirit that renews and creates. The spirit that brings us to our knees in the fear of the Lord is also the spirit that lifts us up in the light of Christ. The spirit that brings a language of its own to our lips is also the spirit that carries the prayers of all to God. We say, come, Holy Spirit, but we're afraid. We are afraid, but we say, come, Holy Spirit. Include us in God's work. Come, Holy Spirit. Increase our understanding. Come, Holy Spirit. Spur us into faithful action. Come, Holy Spirit. Burn away all that is dead within us. Come, Holy Spirit. Strengthen us to stand with our neighbours, to fight against oppression, to stand for peace, to trust in God's faithfulness, and to live and die in Christ for the sake of the world. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen.
as we prepare to open our hearts to God in prayer, I invite you to find the email that you received on Friday and to lift up the folks whose names are on our prayer list in your prayers this week. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, you are the source of breath and life. The power of your spirit is revealed in wind and fire and flame. But what we have witnessed this week is violence and the taking of life, the destruction of community and trust, and the pervasiveness of fear. God of breath and life, blow into our lives. Ignite the fire of hope fan the flames of possibility, transform us into a people who share your love with neighbors in pain, a people who proclaim your hope to communities in despair, a people who live as though the world can be changed through the kingdom that is coming. God of wind and flame and fire, blow into our hearts Ignite the fire of justice, fan the flames of love. Transform us into a people who are not content to be silent, a people who proclaim your truth, a people who live as though the world can be changed into a place where all lives are valued. God of compassion and mercy, Bring your healing mercies to bear on those who need your special care this day, those who are ill or recovering from surgery, those who grieve, those without hope, those who suffer from substance use disorder, those who worry about where the next meal or rent check will come from, those who fear someone with whom they live and those in our community we name aloud. Becky, Jim, Bill, Judith, Bob, Jackie, Nancy, Pete, Janelle, Dan, Joanne, Joyce, Jane, Jane, Eric, Francis, Jackie, Tom, Jean, Jack, and Kyla. Those we name in silence now. God of Pentecost, who makes yourself known in many ways, help us to see what you are doing among us and gift us with courage to join you that all may come to know the power of your love and truth. It is for your kingdom that we now pray, filled with your spirit, using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now in response to the hearing of God's word and in gratitude for all that God has done for us, let us offer the resources of our lives for the work of God's kingdom through this congregation. You may make an offering by sending a check to the Presbyterian Church of Danville at 500 West Main Street, Danville, Kentucky, 40422, or by visiting the Giving tab on our website at presbydan.org. If you prefer to use a QR code, it will appear on the screen at the end of the service. Let us pray. Spirit of life, you long for the world's transformation. Your vision is grander than anything we can imagine, and so we thank you for the privilege of participating in your mission. May these gifts be a blessing that speaks the language of this community 
and may that blessing multiply out to every place. Breathe in us again this day that our whole lives may be an offering for your glory. Amen.
We are all prophets now. May we be truth tellers and truth receivers through the power of the Holy Spirit. And all the community of the Spirit said together, Amen. Go in peace and join us again next Sunday for worship.